here's my new video so please do like and subscribe to my channel and also click the alert button so you can see whenever I do add any new videos. Thank you for watching and enjoy. Hi everybody and welcome to episode number seven of my The Lead to Succeed interviews. Today I am joined by Jackie Clark who is a business coach. Um, Jackie would you like to introduce yourself? Amazing thank you so much for having me Lizzie it's so wonderful to be here. Um, so I'm Jackie, thank you. Um, I am originally from South Africa, but live in the UK now. So um, very close to the beach, even though it's got pebbles on it, which is not my <laughs> idea of a beach, but it's all good. Um, and I run my own online business. So I help um, small business owners create really sustainable businesses that they absolutely love, um, rather than having a business that seems like hard work all of the time. Um, and I try and help people avoid burnout as much as possible um, in all areas of their life. And actually, I think there's there's so much that we can talk about in that kind of joint of believing in yourself and, and stepping into that life you want to live. And actually, that process helps you stop burning yourself out over a period of time, which is which is so, so important. Um, and then what else can I tell you? I'm a cat mum. I have two beautiful oh, nice. cats. I know, right? Got to have animals. <laughs> um, and I am dyslexic. So I oh. started, yeah, I, well, I say I started my life dyslexic. I, I did, but I only realised <laughs> when I was in school. Um, and actually that self-belief belief piece that you talk about on your, on your channel is it's just such an important part of my story because I had no belief in myself when I was growing up and genuinely didn't think that I could be academic that I could you know I could be anything um and now if I look back I'm like how did I believe that like how is that even a belief that I used to hold because I've literally just qualified um with my level seven master's I, you know, I've started my own business. I'm busy writing my first book. Like there's like so many things that if you told me at 17 that this is what I would be doing with my life, I would have literally laughed at you. <laughs> and that's just amazing. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's going to resonate with quite a lot of people because I, I know quite a few people that just that, that are dyslexic, that just really put themselves down. So so where was your sort of turning point? I, obviously, you've, 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 you've been through this all your life. Where did you start to believe in yourself and, and where was that switch? So it's really interesting. There's a there's a couple of key moments that I can remember. Um one, the very, very first one was when I was 17. So um, as you do, I was dating a boy <laughs> um, and I went to his family's house and a family friend was there um, and we got talking and he kind of asked the typical question of somebody finishing school is what are you going to do with your life? Um, and I kind of just like brushed it off. I was like, well, you know, like don't really have any plans. Da, 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 da. Um, and then he carried on sort of talking and I ended up telling him that I was dyslexic um, and his life was amazing. So he was like this massive photographer. He used to fly up from South Africa to do London, pa like fashion week, Paris fashion week. Like uh -huh. he just had like this amazing life. And I was just like, this is like in awe. Um, and he told me that he was dyslexic and he never finished wow. school. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> exactly. And I just like I had this like instant shift and he was talking about how he had taught himself to learn differently because the school system is not set up for people who are dyslexic. It's not set up for people who are different. And this concept was just like mind blowing to me. I was like, there's other ways to do school. Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? And literally, like that was a halfway through my final year. Uh, my uh, sorry, halfway through my eleventh uh, year of the twelve. And in that last eighteen months, I literally took my grades from like scraping through up to like passing all of my subjects. Um, wow! Winning a bursary to go to college. Oh my goodness! Um, I got goosebumps. That's just I know. amazing. It's just like one conversation just like shifted that whole thing. So. That was like the first moment um, of realizing. But then actually, as I got older, so I moved to the UK um, and I started working 
And another really, really key moment for me was, um, again, like really funny way of starting the process, but I used to work in a call center and I used to take calls from angry customers shouting at me all the time. (laughs) 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 And this job popped up like within the company I was in and it was like, oh, like you can, um, it was called like an induction trainer or something like that. Like, I didn't really know what the job was, but it was like nine to five, no phones. And I was like, <laughs> I'm applying for this. Yeah. Like, I don't care what it is. I'm applying for this. And like in school, because of my dyslexia and because of the like fear of reading out loud and all of that, I had built up this fear of public speaking mm-hmm. to the point where I would literally like throw up if I had to like oh, speak goodness. in front of people. Like it was like, it was horrible. And like one-to-one, I was fine. In small groups, I was fine. But if I was like the center of attention, it was just like not okay. Um, and I applied for this job and I got <laughs> and I got an interview and they were like, okay, so you need to stand up and like te- like do a presentation. And I oh was like, what? <laughs> 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 but I ended up, so I ended up not actually getting the job first time round. And then somebody left from that department and they got back in touch with me and they said, we really oh. liked your interview. Would you come... Uh, would you want to come into the team so I said yes and then I spent the first six weeks with this new group of trainees literally red in the face sweating wanting to throw up like continuously it was awful um and like but I'd said yes like I'd gotten off the phones that was my goal um and we were having a uh, a training meeting and there was this trainer that I was working with and I was shadowing him um And he said to me that as soon as you stand at the front of a room, you command respect. Like, regardless of why you're standing there, you are the person at the front of the room. People will instantly respect you until you give them a reason not to. Absolutely. And I was like, what? (laughs) What? (laughs) That's not how this works. But then actually, like, again, he gave me like a really simple exercise. He was like, I want you to tell these guys something really confidently that is like ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and the call center we worked in was an insurance call center and it was coming up to Christmas. So I trained my first group in November um, and everyone had to lock their phones in lockers at the building because for protection, obviously, you couldn't have your own personal phones on. The yeah. Floor. Um, so he said, you're going to tell everyone, you're going to go in there with absolute confidence and you're going to tell this new group of trainees that when they go to the work Christmas party, they're going to have to lock their phone in a locker. <laughs> and I was like, they won't believe me. And he was like, they will. And I went in and I told them and I was so co- like, I was like dead face. Like, this is how it works. They all believed me. Wow. And I was like, and again, it was like, just this like a light bulb moment of like, actually, if you have conviction in what you're saying and you have belief in what you're saying and you you truly believe in you, yeah. you can stand and command any room. And that for me was like my career moment of, wow. you know, I, I went on to train, I left that job, became a head of learning and development, left that job, wow. became a director, started my own business. Like that kicked off this whole career. That's amazing. And it's just like these two like epic conversations with people who just like completely shifted like the whole way I perceive the world around me I think that is just so important and I think that it's it's how you receive that information as well because somebody else might have been given that bit of information and it might have just gone in one ear and out the other but it just shows that that was like sort of guiding your path to to where you are now which is just incredible yeah absolutely it's it is all about like the right time isn't it like you can hear the same message time and time again yeah but you need the right person to say it in the time and so I always say to my clients like you get to the point um of like like you're just at at your end yeah Um, one of my clients gave it a really good name the other day they said you're at threshold ah and I really like that so when you get to that threshold point the right person shows up and says the right thing and you're ready to listen to it yeah whereas all the while before that you're not at threshold it's not it's not annoying you enough or causing you enough issue that you're actually going to do something about it and I think that that self-belief piece like 
it, it you really get to a point of threshold with it don't you you get to a point where you're just like I cannot do this anymore exactly yeah and I think you, you go through sort of cycles don't you and like you can probably you can go through six seven eight times of the same thing happening and you start to have that belief that that's just your life if, when you, like for myself there was a there's a time where I'd get to myself in a really good place financially then something will happen like my car will break or yeah. and, and then that, that that was my belief that I can't get past that stage because I'll get somewhere good and then something bad's going to happen yeah. and it did because that was my belief whereas by working on myself and switching that belief switching that mindset to thinking I actually know that doesn't have to be my life I don't have to I can push past that yeah. and once I've like sort of had that light bulb moment myself it's working and I'm getting past that and it's just it's just amazing so like to, to be able to speak to people like yourself as well where you, you you've had that where you thought I can't do this and I'm dyslexic so therefore I can't do these things for you to then have that light bulb moment and get to where you are now it's just it's just incredible so so yeah so thank you for sharing that with us um, so who who are your clients I and mean, you, you you look after small businesses how do how do they come to you what what kind of challenges do they um sort of come with that that you, you feel might benefit other people Oh, amazing. So most of my clients are new to business or um, new to kind of online. So some mm -hmm. of my clients have been in business for sort of 15 years or so, but they've never worked online in that kind of online space. Um, so I've got a whole like a program that I run. It's 12 weeks. And through that program, we basically build the mindset, belief and strategy yeah. So because I'm dyslexic, I've got a real knack of when my brain works in logic rather yeah. than words. So I can see um, patterns and like ways that people can work, which are just different from what other people see. Mm -hmm. And I've basically taken that and turned it into a process that gives people a perfect um, blueprint to setting up their own business. But it's all on the basis of the fact that you genuinely love what you do. Yeah. So like I'm I'm not interested in people who just want to earn tons of money and want to sit on flashy cars and hold wads of money out like those are not my people. No. All of my clients are going through this because like most of them have got, um, you know, some sort of like illness or, um, you know, a, a disability in the family, like a reason why they can't work full time, long term like other people. Yeah. And actually, they really want to build a business that is sustainable for them and their life and their family. So rather than, um, you know, having to push really hard and, you know, work every hour and burn the candle at both ends. It's completely about this process of actually, you know, everyone can automate, everyone can build a really good model. Yeah. But, you know, and you could like a lot of my clients will earn a consistent, you know, four, five, six K a month. Mm -hmm. like consistently into their businesses others are, are over that you know hitting 10 15 etc and actually it's just that process of you can do less to earn more like you yeah. don't have to do all of the things that's the thing it's all about working smarter isn't it not not harder and um, I know when we were talking earlier you mentioned about uh, burnout so so what have you got any sort of quick little nugget tips to help people that um, might find that they're doing their own little thing at the moment I mean I'm in network marketing as well so exactly. you can you can easily find like that you can either be on your phone constantly like working hours and hours and hours whereas I've personally found myself a little I've, I've got a checklist I, I do my business in an hour and a half a day and I've got nine ten minute tasks and it works wonders for me um, so have you got any little nuggets that that, that might help people one of the key things that I that I always say to my clients is that you you need to you need to like share that balance of working on your business and working in your business. Yeah. So a lot of people when they first start out, they just work in their business completely. So they're just doing the tasks, you know, they're firefighting continuously. And actually, even if they did potentially like it when they first started, they start not liking it really quickly because, yeah. you know, it becomes a chore. Whereas actually, I say to people like you need to split that out and have time where you're working on your business and you're creating a vision for the future, your goal setting, you know, 
I'm really big on vision boards, on, you know, taking the time out to look after yourself. So yeah. part of the program is around like, so we, we look at, I don't know if you've ever read um, Robin Sharma's The 5am Club. No, but I've, I've just started a oh. self-help book club um, yeah. on Facebook. Um, uh, we're reading The Universe Has Got You Back at the minute. Yes. Um, but the, it's it's all books like that. So that's, got, that's going on my list. So yes. the 5am the the 5 5 club. 5am club, right. Yeah, by Robin Sharma. So in the book, so it's, um, it's about living like the best life. And it's about these like four core areas that you need to balance, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, and look after so he talks about looking after your mindset mm -hmm. so, you know what's going on in your head your health set so how much you're exercising what you're eating your sleep all of that stuff your heart set so looking after your passions your visions your you know your your hobbies all that good stuff and then looking after your soul set wow and actually looking after so you know your your actual being as a whole and you know I always say to my clients like the most important part of your day is getting out for a walk yeah like the definitely. most important part of your day is sitting down and meditating doing some breath work like because actually that's the stuff that's going to keep you moving forward it's going to keep you on that success path absolutely rather than just doing tons of stuff because then you just burn yourself out and you're not you're then not useful to anyone for anything absolutely it's giving so, yourself that time isn't it and and like you, you can you can you can like spend a morning routine like I'm, I'm guessing that there's a there's a morning routine within the 5am club yeah. I've read the miracle morning and there's, yeah. there's lots of other um sort of routines that you can do but you've got to find one that works for you and you mentioned meditating as well I meditate every single day mm -hmm. and that has completely changed my life I feel like um I feel like I'm a lot lighter than like what I ha ever have been because I I I I'm spending that time on myself and like you mentioned the breathing work that's involved in meditating as well I personally do guided meditations through YouTube there's so many on there and that like, you just literally play it and you just listen and just do what they say and um, when you finish it it just feels amazing and yeah. you do it in five minutes so you don't even have to dedicate that much time because that's one thing I've, I've heard a lot of don't have time to do these things don't have time to start my own business I don't have time to but actually you, you, you've got all the time in the world and you, you can do lots of big things in such short snippets of time as well so oh, absolutely oh so yeah thank you for that I'm definitely going to put that on my, my reading list um, <laughs> thank you um so I, I mean I've, I've talked a bit about what what you do how you got there um I, I'm, I'm not gonna keep you too long I always keep these about 20 minutes um, so I was just wanting to get one little key tip on how to start believing in yourself. Um, I know, I know there's a lot, but I love it. No, I absolutely <laughs> love it. So one of my favorite things is, um, having a, like a success journal. Wow. Okay. So your success journal is going to be, and this can, like, it can be digital if you're a digital person or a physical book, if you're a physical person, like it doesn't matter. But I always say to my clients, keep a success journal. And in that success journal, you're going to write down literally any successes that you have. So on some days, that success might be I got out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But on other days, that might that, that success might be like for my clients, it might be, you know, that they signed a new client or they showed up on a live video, which they never thought they'd be able to do. <laughs> or, you know, whatever it is. But there's like there's so many successes and so much gratitude that we can adopt and that is a massive thing to shifting your belief absolutely because the more that you believe that you're worth it or you believe that it is for you the easier it is to then accept when good things come your way so it's just about shifting that focus because there's so many good things that happen every single day that people don't even realize or don't pay. Yeah. Attention. And I think that's a really key thing, isn't it? It's, it's celebrating those small wins as well. Like people think that, well, I can only start celebrating when I hit a certain point or I get a certain amount of orders. Actually, no, if you get one order or anything like that's yeah. amazing, celebrate it. Or you have a conversation with somebody that you get to talk about your business with somebody. That's a win. The fact that you're able to actually give one person a conversation whether they buy from you or not doesn't matter you have been able to talk about what you do 
Um, One of the things I always say to my clients is in that success journal, they need to put down every no that they get. I like that. Because a no moves you closer to a yes. Absolutely. Have you read Go for No? Yeah, absolutely. And actually every (laughs) single time somebody says no to you, your success is that you've honed your skills that much more. Yeah. You've had that conversation. You've pitched your business. You've done what you, you know, and, and also like you're building trust with yourself. So yeah. if my client says to me, you know, I want to book five discovery calls this month. I don't care about whether the person says yes or no at the end. No, it's about whether they actually do the activity that they want to book. You know, they want to book in those calls. And actually most of the time. So one of my clients did this recently. They were, we're coming to the end of a program at the moment. Um, so she went out on Facebook and she asked for, for 19 spots to she's a Facebook ad specialist um, to do sessions with people about Facebook ads for their businesses. And she filled all of them firstly. Wow. Epic. That's amazing. Then she went and did the calls with people and she signed five clients. Wow. So she made herself like over a thousand pounds in a week from the, like, and the whole point was just to do the calls. Like we weren't, we weren't aiming for money at that point. We were just aiming to build her confidence, but she ended up signing five clients off the back of it. And I was like, and that's why we do this. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And I think where you mentioned about like getting excited about the no's, writing those down, like you say, they do get you closer to those yeses. And also every no can come with either a learning, but Mm -hmm. like the the reason they said no was X, Y, and Z. So I can maybe change the way I do this um so yeah I think you've just got to celebrate everything because yeah yeah. well the thing is if you think about some of the really big companies like if you think about Facebook Mm -hmm. Mark pitched that pitch to three people and one of them said no to him yeah imagine he'd sat down and been like oh it's a rubbish idea yeah exactly never pitched it again yeah one of the um people that I use quite often is Walt Disney um, so he he got fired from his first job, told that it could never be uh, um, in, in, in the space where he was sort of designing and, and, and drawing. He got told that he wasn't good enough at that. Because you imagine if he'd have listened to that, we wouldn't have Mickey Mouse, we wouldn't have the whole Pixar. Like, it's huge. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it's just... Um, it, it, it gives me goosebumps all these things oh absolutely <laughs> it is, and there's so many like people are so quick to look at other companies you know other people and compare themselves and go oh yeah but look how well that person's doing but you don't see the journey absolutely you don't see the journey you don't see how long it's taken them to get there or one of the big things I always say to people is you don't see how much they've invested no so I've seen people in my like in my space who have taken two or three years to get to the same point as me, mm-hmm. but they've not invested a single penny. They figured it out themselves. Yeah. And then you have somebody like me who's big on like, well, I'm going to invest in the people I need. Like if I need a coach, I'm going to invest in one. If I need a mentor, I'm going to invest in one. If I need, you know, someone to help me with a Facebook ads, I'm going to invest in someone. Yeah. Because I want to do it quicker. <laughs> like Yeah, exactly. Point. And I think that that's also a really big thing about this, like this journey if you've got really, really low belief in yourself, find somebody to champion you, find yeah. somebody to help you because it is a hard thing to do yourself. Like it is. It, it, it's, a, it's a hard thing to change that belief system mm-hmm. when it's really ingrained in you. But, you know, there's so many amazing people like yourself who have gone through this process who get it and can help other people which is you know it's just so it's just so amazing that the world we live in has given everyone access to people who can help them really shift out of those places so yeah I mean that's 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 my goal at the moment um so through my Instagram my Facebook and and through these interviews as well is I'm not where I want to be I'm I'm pretty much at the beginning of my journey um but I've got that belief in myself that I'm gonna make it so I've put myself out there to say I'm taking you on my journey because there are so many times where you do look at that and go and you're thinking well I could never be that but I'm just saying now watch me out I'll I'll take you on my journey (laughs) it's so scary but it it it's just what I want to do and I've just got this passion for it now so like you say you've got to enjoy what you do oh absolutely one of the key things that I'd say to like anyone going through this journey is it's never over no 
there's it's always something point, else. Yeah, there's never a point where you get there and you're like, ah, I'm done, I'm fixed. Like you'll go through the cycle. And I, I've actually, I literally, I spoke to uh, a new coach um, yesterday wow. and I've signed up with a new coach because I've hit that limit again. Yeah, like, so you're ready like for you, more. Yeah, just like you were saying, you go through that cycle and then you keep hitting the same problem and you start believing it's true. And even though I'm that much further on my journey, I've got the same belief, the same belief block. Just the dream is bigger now. Yeah, exactly. And it is a thing that like having that self-belief, it isn't just like one day you, you, you believe in yourself and that's it. You've got to keep working on it. You've got to keep working on yourself. And, and that's where having like a morning routine and, and the meditating that like literally working on yourself every single day um, is mm-hmm. so important. And then, another another thing that I found as well is um like looking at where you were five years ago like five years ago I was desperate to be the woman I am now and yeah. um, and now yeah. I'm desperate to be a, a like my, my, my goals have changed but when I look back on where I was mm-hmm. like I mean I was medicated for anxiety and depression and I was I was broke I was skinned all the time and yeah. I yeah I I, I dream to be where I am right now. So I've got to, I've got to enjoy where I am right now as well as working towards yeah. Uh, yeah. where you want to go. So, yeah, I always say to my clients, and this is such a good analogy, you've got to have one foot in now and one foot in that future goal. Absolutely. And it's a, it's a walking motion. You, you can't just jump two feet into the next thing. You yeah. Have, to have gratitude for where you are now and what you've built and then keep that walking motion to you know to to move through life so absolutely oh thank you (laughs) I mean this this is about you it's not about me but I just I just think it's it's just relevant space for both of us (laughs) (laughs) I just think it is relevant to that for everybody to know that you've got to got to keep working and when you hit a goal take the time to celebrate it don't then start quickly moving on to like you, you get a promotion and you there's some another promotion afterwards don't start thinking right you've hit that one now you've got to go to the next one enjoy it enjoy every moment that you've got because like life life can be short so why, why not enjoy it so yeah, yeah absolutely well I think I think well, I, I shall leave that there but thank you so much for your time and um, uh, how can people find you if they've got a small business and like they might want to get in touch so how do they find you amazing so i am over on instagram um jackie clark um they can come and find me on there it's probably the best place to start their journey fabulous thank you very much i'll speak to you soon